So I'm not sure if anybody knew this or not, but Blizzard has announced expansions for Diablo 4. That's right, gentlemen. That's right. If you thought paying $70 once was good, what about the second time? Diablo 4 needs a big announcement. The content's drying up a little mm -hmm. bit for people, and even myself have been streaming other games. I'm live now checking out the competition for Diablo 4, so if yep. you want to see what the other ARPGs look like, you can find me, it's and I'll have that Elden link down Ring below in today. the pinned comment as well as description. But we did just receive a fairly large announcement about the history and future of Diablo series, so let's go ahead and get into that. We'll be adding annual expansions to Diablo 4. Oof. Now, on this announcement, annual this actually expansion. gave me mixed feelings which i want to explain to you now so like personally i don't really give a shit about this because like i can just buy the expansion right it's not a big deal i have the disposable income to do that but i think this is like i bet this kind of sucks for people that don't have a lot of money i mean 70 like i mean the expansion is probably not going to be 70 dollars. it'll probably only be 60 or 50 dollars but still, that's a lot of money to pay every year. First, let's explain what's going on. This is an interview by Dextero. If you want to read the full thing, as usual, I will have my sources linked down below. Now, Diablo 4 GM confirms annual expansions for the game. Now, if you are not familiar with- He's talking about not Game Master. He's talking about Rod Ferguson. An expansion exactly is to the Diablo franchise. Sorry. This would be like Lord of Destruction for Diablo 2 yes. or Reaper of So for Diablo 3. Effectively, these are purchasable portions That's of right. new content which very often Story, mean they are mandatory like if you wish to play a live service game at the peak with everybody else you pretty much always That's buy right. these expansions for instance when world of early, warcraft was constantly them. launching expansions there were some people that didn't buy lich king that stayed in burning crusade but not very many like the people that are like actually playing people. the game they're all going to buy these yeah. expansions this does sort of make sense because as we know in the campaign it leaves at sort of a cliffhanger yes we kill lilith but no we do not have all of the big bads out of the way nope so what exactly did they say for annual expansions well take a look here this is rod ferguson an answer to their question about asking what exactly the future of Diablo 4 looks like, he says, but you know, it's years and years. That's the thing we're focused on. When you look at the launch of the game in this first season, we see that building a foundation on which can build for the future. So as Why we you say that whenever you're going to get rid of all the stuff you added in season one, though, like what the fuck? look at our quarterly seasons and we look at our annual expansions those are things we're really Ooh, focused on for our life service there it we've is. got plans we have storylines that go well into the future we've mm -hmm. got plans we're always leapfrogging our seasons and leapfrogging our expansions so it's something we are going to do for a long time yep, sure. we're excited I bet. He continues with, when you look back and realize that there were 11 years between Diablo 3 and Diablo 4, that feels like we didn't live up to our players, our community. That's and true. Diablo 3 was a joke. It was only, I'll say it again, people going to get mad, and I want them to get mad. Diablo 3 was a decent game on release beside the bugs, and there's like some balance issues, but like overall it was a decent game. But Reaper of Souls sucked, and they did nothing in the seasons to make them interesting except for like two times. But they deserve that's something we are rectifying in diablo 4 with our seasons and our expansions effectively what they want is a slow bleed in uh of content so that there will always be a next expansion a oh, next yeah. season a new update so they don't want you to feel money. like the updates are 11 years in between which is fair enough now, I have somewhat mixed opinions on this, admittedly. First of all, I like to hear new content is coming to the game. Sure. That is always going Absolutely. to be something I am going to enjoy, considering yeah, my it. firm opinion right now is there is not currently enough content in the game for me, the one to log in every single day, and I am playing Path of Exile. I've been very clear about this. Mm -hmm. So for me, when they announce that, yes, there will be new expansions, I think, great. That means there will be new content. But a part of me also thinks that, hey, this new content that we should be adding to the game should be fixing the original game. The focus should be right now on actually adding into the content that me and the other consumers have already spent our money on purchasing. And while expansions will be great to- Yeah, they're gonna fix the game with the first expansion, guys. The first expansion is gonna finally fix Diablo 4 and Blizzard is gonna start listening. Add content into the game, I do not feel like I want to spend additional money to add content into a game that I feel like is already incomplete. Uh -huh. 
essentially what I'm saying is I hope the solution to the lack of... I don't even think that Diablo 4 is incomplete. I think that it pretty much is complete, and it will be by the time the expansion comes out. But, like, if you have a turd and you cut it in half, are you going to complain that it's half of a turd and it's not the whole thing? No. It's still a turd. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, who cares? of in-game in Diablo 4 is not by selling us another expansion to the game. To be fair to Rod, that is not what he said is happening. He says they are looking at quarterly seasons. This was the first thing he mentioned, which are every three months. And we look at our annual expansions. So he does mention both of them in tandem. Of course, right? Yeah, of course they're going to do seasons. Somebody says I'm uh, I, I, I'm exaggerating. I'm not. I, I think that the uh, like gearing in, D- in Diablo 4 is really bad. I think it really sucks. 90% of the stats are bad, and they're like a waste of space. Like, for example, like, uh, who the fuck wants thorns on their skeleton mages? Does anybody use this? No, it's just a trash stat to fill up space. Like, it was so hard to get good rings as a necromancer for no good fucking reason. It was awful. I also prefer transparency and honesty with what it is they're working on in games like these. So when they come out and say, yes, we're going to be doing an expansion every year, I see that as a form of communication. So I prefer them telling us that instead of just selling us expansions every single year. I am also not... I I think that, like, really, it's that there's no real replayability. Yeah, exactly. Somebody says, Asmon criticizes WoW for not being designed for casuals and Diablo for not being designed for 1% no-lifers. I understand that for you, you're not that smart. And so you think of it on that level. I understand. This must be confusing and upsetting for you. But you are not a one percenter because you get to tier 4. This is not a 1% of the player base gets to tier 4. I'm not talking about how Uber Lilith is ruining the game. There are plenty of dads that are in tier 4. I'm not opposed to the concept of purchasing expansions. As long as the original base game has enough value in it and the additional expansion adds enough that it justifies the price of a new expansion, I will purchase Mm -hmm. expansions in games. I don't feel like I was ever ripped off paying for expansions in World of Warcraft, for instance, as that is a live service game that I enjoyed very much. It also had a subscription fee within the game. So when I bought Burning Crusade, when I bought Lich King, when I bought, well, let's admit Cataclysm, not as much, but when I bought the expansions, I wasn't necessarily disappointed with what they had to offer, but they had major storylines, they had major raids, new items, level cap increases, etc. So if I'm going to purchase additional expansions within the Diablo 4 universe, I'm expecting the same level of delivery. I would also hope the manpower is currently focused on the seasons. The first seasons were lackluster, meaning that going into season two, it needs to be better than season one. And season three, we need to be better than season two. We have a long ways to go to have a fully developed competitive game within the ARPG space. For that reason, I'm hoping the focus is on fleshing out this game. I know they have a bajillion employees, so they can probably do both at the same time. It would make sense. But I would like to see the original core game be fully fleshed out before I spend more money purchasing an expansion for a game. An interesting point. I hope the expansion adds in more stats that have conditional modifiers. Like they could add like a vampiric stat where like um, your attacks do more damage at nighttime in the game. That'd be really cool. Of data, a data here from a GameSpot article says that Diablo 3's expansion Reaper of the Souls sold 2.7 million units, which at the time Diablo 3 had sold 15 million units. So it was a one to five conversion ratio. Considering that Diablo 4 was the highest selling Blizzard product of all time, if they sell another 20% of those consumers an additional X pack, it would make sense as to why they are focusing on creating them annually. I'm not a yeah, po- why are they going to make expansions because they can sell expansions? Like, duh. 
opposed to them continuing to sell products to a live service game. I am of the opinion that if a game is good, I will give it enormous amounts of my money. The name is Darth Microtransaction. In Path of Exile, <laughs> I've only played the game a month, and I am $600 into that game. Yeah, he bought Why? the big pack. Because I believe it deserves the support. It is a good game that I am enjoying immensely. I'm like and it also continues to get better. So I don't feel worse with my purchase as time goes on. I feel better with my purchase as time goes yeah. on. I am willing to give Diablo 4 the same level of consideration. If these expansions continue to come out and they are big deliveries every year of big chunks of new main story. The campaign was quite good in Diablo. I do think I got my money's worth from playing Diablo's The Campaign. Yeah, I got my money's worth playing Diablo 4. It's not the worst game that's ever been made. I don't think the game is a 2 out of 10. I just don't really think it lives up to the Blizzard quality standard. It just isn't really that great at end game. It's not fleshed out. It's boring and it's repetitive. Like, I think that the early game, like, is, is great. And, like, your first, like, I don't know, like 10 to 30 hours of the game will probably be pretty good. But playing it beyond that, it's just not that enjoyable. And I think that the way that they're designing seasons with no type of compounding content that you can work towards and that builds on each other, like PoE, it doesn't make me want to go back and do a season because like, like, you know, for example, like I would want to come back and play WoW because they made like tier two or tier three, right? I mean, theoretically, right? But like, why do I want to come back if they're just remaking tier one every expansion or every season, which is really what they're doing. They're just remaking the steps that you have to take and you just do the exact same thing again. It's not like it's building on itself. It's just replacing itself. The campaign story with good cutscenes and everything is the same. Uh, yeah, I don't think it is. Like, I don't think it's the worst game ever. I don't think Diablo 4 is, is like a, a terrible game. Like, there are some things about it that are genuinely garbage, right? Absolutely. But I don't hate Diablo. I just think they need to put more effort into it. And if they want to make a game that's competitive in the space, they have to compete. Like, the, even the Season 2 trailer, a lot of the NPCs that are supposed to be, like, the vampiric NPCs, they're just the NPCs that are in the game. But they're red. Are you kidding me? What? I will be willing to give it... Uh, some more money into the game. I will be. I'm probably not going to buy the Battle Pass. I'm not buying the Battle Pass every season right now. I don't think the cosmetics mm -hmm. alone are going to be worth it, but the Battle Pass isn't mandatory, and it's there's no subscription fee within the game. Yeah. So I am willing to give it some additional money. However, I say however, my concern is that the solutions to the complaints right now within Diablo need to be hounded down and figured out in the game that people have originally already purchased. We should not sell the solution to an incomplete product by selling the more complete product. Mm -hmm. That is one man's opinion. Yeah, so if they would like to get I someone like that. me to purchase the expansion, show delivery of an otherwise good original product that I purchased and make me satisfied with the original product within your next few seasons, and then sell me the addition to that product in which the original product I am satisfied with. As it currently stands, I think a lot of people are not satisfied with the original product. So selling an expansion early, in my opinion, before we wrap up and finish the original product would be a mistake. However, I agree. Uh, I, I think that a lot of people, especially because Diablo 4 costs a lot of money, it's an expensive game. So, like, at least with Starfield or something like that, you can get it on Game Pass. But there's no Game Pass for Diablo 4. You just got to get Diablo 4. And keep in mind, with Diablo 3, you got Diablo 3 for free if you bought the annual pass to World of Warcraft. Like, I played Diablo 3 for free because I... My dad. I signed him up to uh, pay my annual pass. So like, of course a lot of people tried it out for that reason. And so it's not the same level of investment as it was with Diablo 3. But the truth is that like, I think a lot of people are gonna be like, well, fuck man, I already spent $70 on this game. They want me to spend another 60 and you know there's gonna be like three or four editions of this game. Oh my God, of course there will be, why not? And so, and that's what people are going to be like $90 for the, you know, executive ultimate master wizard bundle. And uh, guess what? It's going to be expensive. So yeah, they, they released a game. Yeah. And you've just, you've got to have it to where people are at least kind of happy with the base game. 
or it's at least been a tr it's, it's been a, a lot of time like diablo 2 or sorry diablo 3 came out in 2012 it came out in may 2012 and reaper of souls came out like two years later it's not like Reaper of Souls came out a year after Diablo 3. No, it came out a good amount of time afterwards. So if you're releasing an expansion this early on, I think people are going to be kind of frustrated. People's reaction to Diablo 3 was so much worse than this? Uh, yes and no. So the reaction to Diablo 3 was really bad, but one of the big reasons why it was really bad is because... The game was, like, fundamentally broken. Like, things didn't work in the game. And you could say, like, resistances? Yeah, true. But, like, things didn't work in the game like uh, most of the mob abilities. Right? It was, like, really... Like, Diablo 3 on release was really broken. It was. Like, if you think Diablo 4 is broken... <laughs> nothing compared to Diablo 3. However, they say annual expansions. They didn't say the next expansion is coming right now. Annual would be yeah, at a minimum yeah. of another eight months from now. In eight months, we could have a pretty solid banger of a game if they grind out and fix all of the complaints that we've been seeing, add new itemization, we know new bosses are coming in season two, etc. So in eight months, when the next expansion maybe will come out, which will be a year at that point, we can look back and see, is the original product created one that I feel satisfied with my purchase? And do I believe they are deserving of additional purchases? If that is the case at the time, mm -hmm. then you will see me purchasing the expansion. That was my mixed feelings upon seeing the uh, announcement that we saw about this annual expansion here. And I don't think it's that big of a deal that they're coming out with expansions. I know there was some pushback by some people that the game's not finished and they're already announcing expansions. They said annual, so we're talking eight months, which means by then they should have four seasons completed. And if they Surely by four seasons, they'll be able to figure it out, right? Surely by that time, they'll have known what to do can't get the game fixed in four seasons, you know what to do about buying the expansion. That is yeah. just one man's opinion. Love you all. See you on the next video. I will be live now, and that will be pinned in the comment as well as the description. It's just this simple, okay? Yeah, before if you see the game, and it looks like it's a game that's worth playing, then you should try it out and buy it. Or at least look at reviews. But if you're not enjoying the current game, then don't buy the new one. Then stop doing it. Like, I think that I got my money's worth for Diablo 4. I, I did. I got level 100. Like, my second character is like level 80 or something like that. I don't even know what level I am. But he's pretty high level. And, uh, like, I went through all the content. I did, like, the, the whole campaign. I did all the side quests. I did all the zones. I did the dungeons. I didn't kill Uber Lilith, but at least I did her. And, uh, you know, it was f fine, I guess. I did No, not, not like that. Unfortunately, not like that. But, um, otherwise, like, I don't know. I feel like I got my money's worth from the game. Sure. I enjoyed myself, sure. Going through a game makes it worth it? Yeah, like for the amount of hours that I played the game, I would say that I enjoyed the time decently enough. Yeah, it was all right. Your money's worth as a creator or as a consumer. If you hadn't made content, would it have been? I don't see like if I didn't make content, would it have been? What is the dollar value of that? And I think that that's the, and this is the point that I'm getting at, right? Is that the dollar value of your time really depends because I have friends of mine who spend a thousand dollars on a weekend and they're not streamers. It's Jeff. Jeff, it's Jeff. Jeff has no business spending a thousand dollars, five hundred dollars on a weekend downtown. There's no business doing this, but he will go out and do it. And, and that's just what happens. And so like, Whenever I see somebody going out of their mind for $70, I can understand why, but I also know that there are a lot of Jeffs, and there are people that they spend a lot of money on entertainment. Oh, Jeff, by the way, don't shit on Jeff. Jeff is a top 500 Overwatch player now. He is literally Grandmaster in top 500.
So, uh, yeah, he's been playing a long time. And, uh, look. I'm just saying, like, it's a, uh, it, it's, it's a decision based off of the value that you see. There's only 500 people play? Well, whatever it is, right? I, that's probably what I should tell him. But either way, um, is Jeff Cody's brother? Yeah, it's Cody's brother. And, uh, I, I, but the point that I'm getting at, right, is that the dollar value of your time really depends on what you want to do. Perceived value is subjective, yes. Like, I feel like I got my money's worth for Diablo 4. If I only had $60 a year to play video games, the truth is I probably wouldn't spend that $60 on Diablo 4. If I only had a very small amount of money to spend on games, I would probably play free-to-play games. Straight up. Like, I would probably play something like that. $60 a year? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if I was, like, a kid, right? Because, like, kids don't have that much money, right? They'll get money on their birthday or on Christmas, and other than that, maybe they get a little bit of money for allowance, and that's about it. Right? Yeah, you can play PoE, you play Genshin. Like, and that's why a lot of kids play these games, because they're free to play. Like, unironically, that's why. So, like, I just think that you should make the right decision. You should make the right decision for your money. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is by watching streams or by watching videos. In my opinion, I think watching streams is 10x better than videos, because in videos, they cut out the boring part. In streams, you get to see what it's really like. Tune in on Twitch, watch the new game be played by your favorite streamer. You know everybody's going to be playing the new Diablo expansion regardless of if they say they're not going to or not. They're all going to be playing it. And so you can tune in and watch people and see it for yourself. And that's what I think you should do.